Good afternoon. My name is Scott Rudd, the Chief Strategic Officer at T3Live.com. Welcome to today's recap. I got to do this fast. Uh, came in this morning. Futures were down 13 to 15 handles uh, on Friday. Big rebalance. A uh, little bit of window dressing. Everyone was saying that it was a false move, and we were like, you know what? Let's see uh, if there's any commitment to it. Where do we hold? What would be con uh, constructive for the bulls, and what would be impressive for the bulls? So get right here to the chart of uh, you know the, the SPX or the spiders, and you'll see. You know, the first level we talked about was right here. Okay, this was basically your uh, 191.50 on the spiders and about 1916-ish on the S&P. And it went as low as what? Um, the low here was 1920. So pretty, pretty, you know, I would say um, pretty impressive. That, that, that's what we held, considering that you had this wedge breakout that we were talking about. And on Thursday, you know, you were as low as uh, 1873. So a nice two-day move. For the first time in a while, they actually kind of held it in there, and now we'll see what's next. It also kind of took out um, what's it called, uh, the high of, uh, of Friday before coming off a little bit, and now we're, you know, we're entering this zone. So the question is, um, how much further can this go? You know, we're above the 8-day now, we're above the 21-day. You have, uh, you know, remember this spot that we talked about to start the year? You know, this comes in a little bit closer to 1988. So there's really like a, a bit of an air pocket here. So we're going to have to see what the story is. You know, if you, if you think about it, you know, we talked about the potential of oil decoupling, which started last week. And then on Friday, when oil came in, markets didn't go lower. So anyway, you know, at this point, you know, it's not a blazing bull run, but it feels like they're trying to keep things going in order maybe to sell it a little bit higher and false, you know, get some guys to come in so it's not game over, you know, for the upside to the downside. So let's, we'll, let's just check some things out real quick. Russell. Um, also, you know, not a great scenario, but uh, it did hold in there, held above uh, this breakout level from Friday. The IBB, some guys were talking about that as a catch play. To me, it's still one of the most broken looking sectors. You know, last time I tried to, you know, get this as a catch play, you know, it failed and then it broke below. So now you'll see maybe you have a, a, a rally attempt down here. Um, all in all, still very broken, the bios, um, but who knows, you'll, you'll see what happens there. Banks didn't really do much today. They were weaker this morning. Um, if you take, I guess, a, a real snapshot of what really happened here, not a whole heck of a lot. It, too, came in and, and held a, a decent amount of Friday's move, and we'll see if there's any kind of digestion to go higher. So you have a bunch of sectors that are acting better than the market by reclaiming the 21-day and some that are still lagging. And the question is, do they play catch-up or you know, are the, all the funds going into the S&P because that's where new money goes, and then once that rolls out or... or, or you know, or stops, will we roll over? So that's some things we're, we're playing with. You know, we did have some decent trades, you know, out of the blue. You know, Netflix and Tesla, two of them. This morning, Netflix, there was some news that, you know, Apple might look at them, et cetera, et cetera. Stock is still very broken, but, you know, early on, it gave you a little relative strength, and, you know, it was good on a five-minute basis, but still below the 200-day, so it has a lot to prove. Tesla was downgraded by Morgan Stanley, the same guy that <laughs> put a 480 target you know, all the way up here is now downgrading it down here. That's why analysts are worth about nothing. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but, you know, I remember, I think right around here, they, or maybe it was this day, they put a, a 480 price target out of nowhere, and now they're putting, um, you know, they lowered it. So anyway, um, you did have a small red dog reversal here. You had um, some news that Musk was doing something with his options. Maybe that was helpful. Or, um, but all in all, you know, maybe this is a day one, you know, for continuation. So I would say... Out of um, your potential day one trades, which are risky, you have um, you know, Netflix, uh, Tesla, and, um, and, and even Twitter. You know, three broken stocks that gave some good intraday action, and now you'll see if there's any follow through tomorrow. Who knows? You know, one of the best stocks, though, that we've been holding since Friday that I sold today was you know, Facebook. Facebook gave you a really nice gap up after earnings. Here was your gap up. Um, been on long on the virtual trade floor until today, but you know me on day three, I, I get out. You know, it goes up day four, day five, I get a little upset, but you know what? This was a nice move. I think now I didn't have it on this day. I bought it down on Friday, added to it here, took it home, added above this high, and now, you know, it's a little extended. But all in all, you know, very healthy above, you know, th this prior pivot. As far as Google, I'm not exactly sure where it's trading right now, but um, we talked about the spot to buy it if it's, in, if it's a blowout quarter after hours is right here. Um, and that is 798. I do think as I was walking in, because I was coming in to do the, the recap versus trading after hours, it was as high as 840. So 
you know, if you, if you did trade it after hours, this was the pivot, and I think you had a little bit of time to buy it. Some are asking, what's the measured move? There really is no measured move, except for if you, I guess, looking at this as a channel, 710 to 800, so a measured move would be, you know, closer to 875-ish. But I would only be long Google if you're trading it after hours if it holds above this 800-ish. Okay, and if you bought it at 800 and you sold it above 825 or close to 840, great after hours trade. You know, it was set up above all moving average. So I feel like, you know, institutional flow wanted it to be good regardless. And they, who knows what they would have done. But I'd wait for the conference call. But at, at this point, that was a, a, good, a good trade for a lot of you. Um, you know, I went over some support that had a hold in the banks. They were definitely weaker today. That kind of skewed my judgment on buying the dip. Um, but all, all in all, an inside day there. You look at JP Morgan. All in all, you know, it also had an inside day. Didn't outperform today, but the banks haven't. So, you know, let's see if this, you know, builds to have commitment for higher prices. Gold, I think, made a higher high. So congrats to you guys who have been watching this trend. You know, maybe tomorrow you see the 200-day. Uh, we've been talking about how it's been following the 8-day, you know, for a while now. Um, it broke above this 106, came back, retested it, and now it's at high. So much more methodical than you've seen in a while. So hopefully you're involved in those and maybe even the miners. What did the TLTs do today? Uh, filled the gap, still above the eight day. So see, you know, if that continues or not. You know, it's been above the eight day ever since breaking above this trend line here. So as long as that kind of stays in there, um, it'll put uh, you know a few divergences out there. Oil, you know, um, definitely pulled in more than you would have thought for the bulls to be happy with. And at this point, I guess you'll see what happens tomorrow. Um, there was you know no grand bargain on the table, and this gap is filled and I guess uh, see what happens here. If oil starts to break and close below 30, I have a feeling that you know the market's going to notice this little ascending channel right now. It got broken to the downside, so uh, you know tomorrow's you know, I guess uh, morning move will be important for the futures. Besides what what, what Google's doing, so all in all, it's a new month. Um, we've had a big move off of that Wednesday low from my January 20th. You've seen it's a methodical trade since. You know, you have your haves, you have your have-nots, you have your strong stocks, you have your earnings gaps, you have your day one potentials, you have a lot of things going on. You know, don't trade the noise, trade what you're comfortable with. Um, today, you know, I had a good buy. I thought maybe the market wouldn't run away, and this was the first time you really had a shallow pull-in and then a grind all day. And um, what that does is it keeps the, the bears trapped, and they have to cover higher if they've been just shorting for the last two weeks, thinking that we had to break 1812 or get to 1770 or get to 1670, but we didn't realize it doesn't have to ha all have to happen in one month. And the same way if bulls, you know, had good long, sold them early, they oh, I sold early, and they get upset that they're not involved anymore, so they kind of want to stay involved. So when things are pent up, they move a bit faster than we've seen, you know, when things are just choppy, misdirectional, and random. So it's better when it's more strategic. Have a good night. I'll see you tomorrow.